our life. Construction and constructing our life. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 all the way through 29. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. <clears throat> and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great, oh, I'm going to say it like this, and great, and great was the fall. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. When Jesus told them these things, when he taught, you know, I want to tell you that you better be prepared because it does rain on the just and it rains on the unjust the same. I said to somebody, not long ago, I said, if you ever want to see the beautiful flowers, you have to endure some of the rain. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. If you want to look at the pretty flowers, you've got to endure some of the rain. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust. But he said that a wise man had built his house upon a rock. Now we know that any time you go building a house, and, and I've used this scripture before in a different manner, but you've got to have a sure foundation. You've got to have a solid foundation if you're going to build a house. That you need to have it. And, and you know, the further you dig down, the better footer you're going to have. So when we go to build, we need a foundation. But I'm not talking about building a regular house tonight. I'm talking about building a life. Amen. Constructing a life, building a life. What is life? People don't know what life is. People have no idea of what life is. I have a habit. I've always had this habit, and sometimes it gets me in trouble, but I'm a people watcher. No matter where I go, I, I, sometimes I, I go to the mall and everybody's running around doing their thing, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching people. Not in particular people, just people. People in general. I walk around Walmart and I watch people. Sabrina, how in the world do you work there and keep your sanity? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you watch people and you're going in and out and you're like, my goodness gracious. Are they really? Are they real? Is there really people like that? But I watch them anywhere I go. I watch, I watch the way they do things. I watch how they act. I watch how they carry themselves. I, you'd be surprised. Sometimes you just hit I should have crawled out from under that rock a long time ago. I was working in Charleston one time and I had a guy with me and he was from way back in Lincoln County up in the hills and at back holler and everything. He didn't know a whole lot. He was working with me and we were working up in Charleston. And my goodness, by the time we got back to Huntington, I thought the guy was going to have to have a bottle of nerve pill. Oh. It made him a nervous wreck being up there in Charleston and seeing the things that we see now with people. But people in their idea of life, you know, you got these in school, you got these kids that has an idea of what life is. They walk around all shoulders back and they're very bold and they strip their step because they're on the football team and they got all the girls in the schools liking them and, all, and boy, they got the life. Mm -hmm. That's living the life now. They have no idea what life is. 
I've seen a lot of uh, uh, jocks in school with football players and basketball players and baseball players. And, and when they're at home, they're so miserable that they don't really want to live. But they put a persona on in front of their friends. They 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 act. They uh, they 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 do a cliche. They go with the flow, and they think this is living the life. They have no idea what living the life is. You know, in life, in life we have four different categories that we live in. Mm -hmm. In life, you have the category of survival. Yeah. Just doing what you got to do to get by. Yeah. If you have to take and clean toilets, you, you go clean toilets. If you have to dig ditches, you dig ditches. If you have to bail hay, you bail hay. If you have to clean out a hog pen, you clean out a hog pen. It's called survival. It's called knowing how to how to eat and how to survive in life. But then, then you got the next category that you know not just surviving is good enough anymore. Now we gotta find us an occupation. We got to have an occupation. A lot of people, they know that they learn how to build houses and they learn how to work on cars and some people know how to work with leather and some people can draw a little bit. Some people know how to paint and, and that's their occupation. They moved up from survival. Now they have an occupation. Then after your occupation, they have career. Right. You know, a lot of times I, God gives me a message and then I should immediately after he speaks a message to me not get on Facebook and see anything. That way people don't think that the message was designed just for them. It's not. Woke up early in the morning with this message. Just right about the same time I was getting sick in my stomach. Couldn't sleep. So I begin to pray. Survival, occupation, and now people get a career. And they're living the life. They take a trade and now they have a career that they can look forward to. They have something that they can lean back on. And they, have, they have it made because they're successful in their career. And then you've got profession. You got people that's living the life in professional athletes, in football, in basketball. They're, they're professionals at what they do. People being doctors and lawyers, that's more than a career. That becomes a profession. See, a career, you might be a secretary in the law firm. Profession, you're a lawyer in the law firm. So they're living the life now because now they have all this. They overcame survival. They overcame occupation. They overcame career. Now they have a profession. How can anything go wrong now because they're living the life? Amen. Amen. Because people don't even have an idea of what life is. Oh, but man, I tell you what, because people has a desire for these fancy cars. People has a desire for these big houses. People has a desire for these nice big old four-wheel drive pickup truck. People has a desire for a motorboat. People has a desire for motor homes and RVs. And some people has a desire to ride a Harley Davidson. <laughs> But when they, when they go out and they work and they buy these things, they're living the life. See, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, it says, A feast is made for laughter and wine make it merry, but money answers all things. That's, that's scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Money answers all things. You want a nice home? Money's your answer. You want a nice car? Money's your answer. You want a nice RV? Money's your answer. 
you have these activities that you like to go and do, but something, I mean, there's sometimes that I look back and I watch other people and I'm like, that must be nice. Don't let it ever eat at you, though. Jesus said, be careful about being covetous. That's a bad spirit. Covetous is a bad spirit. You begin to covet what other people have. But what started it is maybe there was somebody that in that high school that was looking up to the football jock and said, I need to be just like him because he's living the life. I need to do what I need to do to make myself as happy as he is. I got to carry on like he does. I got to act the way he does so I can be living the life. And then once we get into the real world and we don't want to just survive no more and we want something better and we start seeking after better things of this world that other people have. Oh, they got nice homes. And I got a nice home. It may not be a doctor's house. It may not be a lawyer's house. But my God, give me a roof over my head. And, and I praise Him for it. I'm warm in the winter and I'm cool in the summer. Amen. Amen. The people, they have covetousness and they want more and they want better. Money is the answer to everything. Money will buy you anything you want. Money can buy you happiness. Money can buy you friends. Money can buy you a lot. Money can buy you a home. Money can buy you a car. Well, we got the good life now. We got the good life because now we we have the money to do what we want to do and we can go where we want to go. We can take the trips that we want to take, where we want to take them, and when we want to take them. But it's not life. It's not life. I'm not standing here telling you don't have a nice home. I'm not standing here telling you don't have a, a, a nice car. I'm not telling you don't be able to go on a trip. If, you, if God's blessed you that way, then praise the Lord for it. But that's not life. In John 1 verse 4 it says, In Christ Jesus is life. And the light was the light of men. In Jesus, there was, he was the light. He came into the world and he became the life of men in Christ Jesus. John 3, 16, for we all know that one. I bet we can, I, we can quote it verbatim, can't we? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There's only one kind of life and it only comes when we're born again. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. That when we believe that He came to this earth, that He died and He rose again. That's the life that we have that's everlasting life. Amen. 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 Everlasting life. Amen. Jesus said, in John 6.35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. If we eat of this bread, he said, you shall eat this bread and take of this wine. This is my body. This is my blood. But he said, I'm the bread of life. Not fancy living. Not the high ups. Not almighty. I'm the bread of life. He is the almighty. We're not. But we eat of him and we in him we find our life. John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light, the have light of life. So where's our life? What's life? I'm the light of the world. If you follow after me, you won't walk in darkness, but you will have life. Right. 
One of my favorite ones is John 10.10. 10. The devil, you're wicked, evil, no good for nothing, lying, cheating, stealing, adversary, the devil. You don't say all that. I just put more names to him. He's wicked. He's evil. He's a liar. He's a cheater. He's a stealer. He's a good for nothing. Amen. He's a good for nothing liar. Amen. He said your adversary, the devil, the one who is wicked, the one who is evil, the one who wants to steal. He is only come for one thing and one thing only. Wickedness will kill you. Wickedness will steal you. Steal from you, and wickedness will destroy you. Amen. What does Jesus say? But I have come that you may have life, and more abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But when we get out here and we start chasing after these things that don't mean a dime to us, that salvation. When we start seeking after things and we say, if I don't have this, I don't have what? If my life is run, if, if this job is gone, my life is run. Now your life ain't run. Your finances may be run for a little bit, but your life isn't run if your life is based in Jesus. Amen. But the devil, he is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. Any way that he can get in there. Now, you know, I know we got to work jobs and we got to make money to pay for our bills and pay for our food. I mean, the Bible even says a man don't work, don't need. Amen. You know what's wrong with the generation that we have nowadays? Don't work. People are lazy. Yes, what? Amen. Come on. Anybody in there? Early 50s down. It's lazy people. Not everybody, but that age group. Anywhere from 50 down, people's gotten lazy. I'm not saying everybody in that age group is. Not everyone is. Man, I'll tell you what. They got lazy. And then, even worse than that, the younger ones is in their 20s down. It's even worse. Uh-huh. Slothfulness. Laziness. I remember at home. I don't want to step on toes here. You better make sure your boots are really tight on your feet. Watch out. I remember when I was growing up. If the trash can was full, you emptied it. Yeah, right. Amen. That's just a thing that you did. Amen. Mom and dad would say, hey, did you see the trash can was full? Yep. Why didn't you empty it? Right. Yep. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> do it yourself, but my goodness. <laughs> we still get the, uh, now you know where I get this at. Are <laughs> Everything around here. Yes, sir. Kids didn't even get a trash can. Oh. I gotta do that. I learned a valuable lesson as a teenager. If I didn't want mom going in my room putting up pretty flowery curtains and beautiful bread, bread, uh, bed spreads and quilts on my bed, I better clean my room. You don't know what it's like for a 15 year old to bring his friends into his room and you got flowers on your bed and your curtains are pretty. It looks like a sissy room. 
<laughs> or your sister would be in there playing with your tape player and she pulled in her Sesame Street music in. Walked in there. Now I'm all cool, you know. I, 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 got, the, I got the life. I'm cool. I walk in there and my buddies are with me. This time I cleaned my rooms. I didn't have no girly stuff in there. I had a reputation to protect. Hit the button. Yeah, I'm glad you said that for me because I can't say it. <laughs> that rock and roll group, quite wild. I told you I can't say it. I hit the button on there and I hear, We eat the booty in the plane. <laughs> school with a bunch of punks and I went to school with hey Tony. You're listening to the Sesame Street monsters <laughs> like that. <laughs> Bye. But I learned that I cleaned my room. If I was told to clean my room, I cleaned my room. If I was told to do the dishes, I did the dishes. And if I went in there and just did halfway like some people nowadays just They told me something on day this. They said he only washes the front of the plates. He don't touch the bottom ones. <laughs> and I would have done that. And I have done that. Mom would go back through after you wash the dish. And she'd go through and she If it was dirty, guess what happened? Everything you got to rewash it. But everything. Everything that was in the cabinet, she would pull out and let you wash them. Then she would decide, hey, we had leftovers in there all week long. And she would start emptying everything. <laughs> so then you had more dishes and a bag of garbage to take out. <laughs> <laughs> we had chores. And there was many, many, many times when I got up and I think, I don't want to go and mow the grass today. I don't want to wash the car today. I don't want to clean my room today. I don't want to. I always thought it. You better believe I never said it. Mm -hmm. I never said it. I learned to clean my room. I learned to take out the trash. I, I learned how to even clean the bathroom. The people are lazy, and the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. Slothfulness and laziness are brothers. Yeah. And wastefulness. Yeah. People get wasteful. But anyhow, the life that we seek after and we change, I'm not telling people not to work. You have to work. You have to be able to make it in life that we live. You have to be able to pay bills. You have to be able to buy food. You have to be able to take care of medical expenses when they come up. You have to have work to do this. As long as you can do that, you're fine. Right. Mm -hmm. But you take the football chalk at school. You can go to school and you can play football or baseball or basketball or soccer or whatever sport it is you like and you can be good at it. You can succeed at it. But until somebody has given you Jesus, Amen. the life that you're putting out there for everybody to see isn't life. That's right. At home, you're like miserable. Don't want to be here. Wish I could just emancipate myself and move out on my own. Mm -hmm. Been there. People that's out there just surviving. There's plenty of janitors everywhere that are happy 
because they're providing for their family. They're paying the light bill. They're paying the water bill. They're buying food, putting it on the table. They got a roof over their head, so they're paying their rent payment or their house payment, and they're perfectly fine with it. But if you take that man and he's working that job and he's got all this going for him, but until somebody tells him about Jesus, I can clean toes and be happy in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Or I can budget a million dollar budget and be happy if anybody would trust me doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't take nothing, believe me. Because you know what? What kind of life is that? When it comes that way, that's the wicked that is out to kill, steal, and destroy. People can have an occupation. I know many people that know how to get up on a roof, and they know how to lay a roof, and they can have it done in in two days, and people know how to frame up a house, and there's people out there that know how to mix concrete and and pour footers and and do this and do that, because that's their occupation. There's there's a lot of men out there that can lift up the hood on the car and know what's looking down in there and know what's going on and, and know what they need to do to get the car running right again. Praise God, there's people out there that knows how to do that. But if they don't know Jesus, they're just barely getting by. Oh yeah. There's people in the nursing field that takes care of people. They have a career. They became a nurse. There's people that has a career that that works as bookkeepers. They have a career as working as secretaries. And they do a fine job at what they do. But if they don't know Jesus. I'll tell you what, with what Jane does at work, she... It's an occupation for her. It, it, it's a living. It, it brings in the money. It helps us pay our bill. And But if she didn't know Jesus, she would be miserable on her job. Oh, yeah. And my job, if I didn't know Jesus, I wouldn't be able to do my job. Right. Amen. Amen. Why anybody would say, Oh, I'm going to go to Bible college and I'm going to become a minister. Run! (laughs) Be a janitor! No, it's not that bad. It's not bad at all because your rewards are great. Mm -hmm. Your benefits is out of this world. And the retirement plan? Oh, you can't beat it. Amen. 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 But then there's professionals. The professional athlete. It's got everything going great. But until he knows Jesus, he's another athlete. Amen. You know, I've seen several times, and I'm sure most of you in here have too. How many times have you seen where famous people like singers and entertainers and, and actors and actresses, they go bankrupt. They, they said, oh, the bank is going in and taking their nice home in Beverly Hills or their nice uh, mansion down in Nashville. They lost it. They lost their bus. They lost their vehicle. They lost their truck. They lost everything that they owned. But, and, and, you know, and they had a profession. They were good at it. They were living the life. They were living the dream. And life was great because they had their nice home. They had their nice bus. They had their nice vehicle. But now it's all gone. Right. Amen. Football athletes go into the NFL. Get a three uh, somewhat million dollar contract. They get in there. 
They signed the contract. They start getting checks. They play two or three seasons, and then all of a sudden, oh, shoulders out. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. You're Kneecap is destroyed. Big guys that used to run and be very quick at what they did running backs when they run that football. Man, they were quick. They were unstoppable. But all of a sudden, one time, all it took was your leg going the wrong way and, and your kneecap broken. Your your career, your, your profession is down the train. You'll never be able to play football again. I ain't got nothing else. Life is gone. Life as you know it is over because you don't know what life is. But God! Amen. But God! Amen. Amen. No, I love bragging on people when I know what 